Hello, this is Jake Abbott. This is a video about discrete time internal stability. This video presumes you've already watched the continuous time internal stability video and understand it. Uh, so many of the notions from continuous time internal stability directly apply to discrete systems that I, I'm not even going to bother um, repeating them. I'll just quickly reiterate what they what they were. So for discrete time systems, remember we're talking about systems that look um, like this. And we are going to again be considering the zero input response. So we're going to be interested in just this system here with no input at all. And we know already that the solution to this system looks like a raised to the k power times x naught. So again, we're only going to consider how an initial state uh, evolves in, in, in time, even though time isn't really the notion here, so just evolves period um, to make, to make um, our state x, and we're going to have no input at all. So the notions of stability that we talked about before are very similar. So we had this idea of stability in the, in the sense of Lyapunov, and so we called that Lyapunov stability. And the definition of that Lyapunov stability was that every finite initial condition excites a bounded output. I shouldn't say output, I should say response. I'm not talking about our output y, I'm just talking about our, our state response x. Um, we said our, uh, our system was asymptotically stable if every finite x0 excites a bounded response. So basically, if it's Lyapunov stable and x uh, of k goes to 0 as k goes to infinity. So it's the same notion as time going to infinity, but we just mean as the evolution marches on, our state goes away. So we're asymptotically stable if we're Lyapunov stable and our state decays away. And then we're going to use in this class the definition of marginal stability that most people mean when they say marginally stable, meaning we are Lyapunov stable, but we're not asymptotically stable. So these are things that are basically sort of oscillating, not decaying away, but also not growing to infinity. So our notions of uh, asymptotic stability are very similar, but um, to say our system is asymptotically stable, we're going to say, uh, excuse me, this is k plus 1 equals a x at k. This system is asymptotically stable if every eigenvalue of a has a magnitude less than 1. So in the imaginary plane, if we're looking at the real imaginary complex plane of our eigenvalues, what we're talking about is that every one of our eigenvalues inside the unit circle and not on the unit circle. So not on. So we're in this open unit circle. If every single one of our eigenvalues is inside of here, then our system is asymptotically stable. If even one of our eigenvalues is not inside of the open circle, then we're not asymptotically stable. Our system is marginally stable. So our system is marginally stable if every eigenvalue has magnitude less than 1 um, or equal to 1 and those equal to 1 are simple roots of the minimum minimal polynomial minimal polynomial so um, of a so this is the exact same notion as with continuous time systems so basically what it means is if you look at the Jordan form of your a matrix it's okay if here's our a matrix is Jordan form it's okay if we have things that are that are less than one 
in Jordan blocks. Um, and of course the sign here doesn't matter, it's just the magnitude, so this is all okay. And it's okay to have something right on the unit circle as long as it's in a, a Jordan block of one. So this system here is marginally stable. But if we have a Jordan block where minus 0.5, minus 0.5, 1, so I have two eigenvalues inside the unit circle here, 0 0.5, 0 0.51, I have two eigenvalues inside the unit circle here, and 1, 1, 1, so I'm right on the unit circle. This makes it not marginally stable. For the exact same reason as with the continuous time systems, this, this is going to result in one term growing to infinity, uh, where this just results in a term that's, that doesn't grow to infinity, but it just also doesn't decay away to, to zero. So these notions just directly apply between uh, continuous time and discrete time systems. Um, and just with with continuous time systems, equivalence transformations don't affect our stability results because it's ultimately based on eigenvalues. And if I do an equivalence transformation, it doesn't. This equivalence transformation doesn't know if A is a continuous time or a discrete time system. The same logic applies. So A bar and A have the same eigenvalues, so they have all the same stability properties. So these notions of uh, and stability for continuous time systems all directly apply. The only thing we're, the only thing that changes is instead of looking at the open left half plane of the complex plane, we are looking at the open unit circle of the complex plane to evaluate the stability of the eigenvalues. Other than that, nothing changes.